Hello everybody, I'm back here again for our vlog a day and today is Thursday the 13th and today was a beautiful day. A little bit of rain here and there, um, tried to sprinkle and it actually stormed pretty good in the afternoon but uh, overall gorgeous gorgeous day. Um, woke up this morning um, super early, had the puppy coming so luckily um, Lola had already went home so it was a lot easier with the puppy. Um, I'd gotten up, I woke up earlier now so I actually got out and got in the hot tub for a little bit. Gave myself a nice little soak, um, got back out, got in, got the dog, played the puppy a little bit, got him settled down, waited for my wife to get up and get going in the morning um, so we could make noises, you know, trying to keep everything quiet so she can get as much sleep as possible. So she got up, um, got a couple things accomplished, uh, went ahead and decided to get my run in early because I wanted to get it done and over with. Um, so I got my run taken care of, got back, got showered, got cleaned up, changed. Um, had to go pick up my father-in-law so I could take him to the dentist. He had a couple... Um, I think two or three teeth left to take out in the bottom so I can put a um, dentures in for him and all that fun stuff. So he yeah, he's going to be put under, I assume, twilight kind of thing because he fell off the bed here a while back and hurt his ribs and his shoulder and stuff a little bit here and there. So he's kind of having trouble sitting still. So thought we'd put him under twilight. He won't have to be squirming around and all that fun stuff. So grabbed the dogs, took Bruce and the puppy with me. Um, went up there, met him. Um, he was already outside, and I was like, oh, "That's ain't good," because usually he's not, he's not outside waiting for us. He's just kind of wandering around. He had that nervous, like, not only just like scared kid look, like he has a um, test that he hasn't studied for kind of thing, and he was kind of panicking and kind of over anxiety, and he's got some issues, and he's, I don't know, he's kind of been frightening himself into thinking things are a lot worse than they are, and kind of doomsday prepping his whole mind and. I'll only think about the bad stuff. He keeps forgetting to think about the good stuff and whatnot. So he was getting kind of freaked out. So we drove over to the um, dentist office. We were a little early, so we kind of took our time and did some laughing and joking, trying to take his mind off it and get him, you know, relaxed before he goes in to get his um, surgery done and all the fun that comes out. They were going to basically take a couple teeth out, do some grinding on the jawbone, get it ready for the uh, denture to go in and all the fun that comes with that. So. Um, he was kind of panicking. I, did, I tried to play it off and tried to, you know, let him know it's not a big deal and it's all fine and yada yada. And I didn't even bother texting my wife because I knew I'd just worry her about it and that whole thing. So got to the dentist's office, went in, um, checked him in, got him all ready to go, gave him my number. And they're like, you got to wait here for me and stuff. And they told my wife it's going to be an hour and a half. And then I found it was going to be 35 minutes. I'm like, what the hell? It makes no sense why you would say that. But I told him, I said, we outside in the parking lot. Um, basically blah blah waiting i'm not waiting around a bunch of other people just it's a pandemic we still live in so there's no reason to hang around people when i can sit in the parking lot literally you know 25 yards away and come back in and get him when it's done they'll weigh him out in a wheelchair and give it in the truck take him home so he got in there um i was sitting outside grabbed myself a cigar um set the lawn chair up out there in the grass off the side of the parking lot had the dogs let him run around a little bit bruce was not even on leash he's just hanging out in the grass he don't go nowhere and the puppy was tied to the tailgate so he couldn't go anywhere there and he was kind of laying around and enjoying herself and just kind of wasting time watching a little bit of um, Netflix on the iPad and just kind of hanging out uh, waiting around I got a um, call from the dentist's office and they're like thinking I left or something like I told you I'm right here said so to come out and check on me and they like talked to the lady she said what's going to happen and so on and forth and that's what told me it's going to be 35 minutes instead of an hour and a half which I was like okay whatever and then um got that whole thing done she went back and said well come out and keep checking on your stuff I'm like what do you think I'm leaving him like what the hell I'm here so it was no big deal it's kind of like whatever and stuff and then a little bit later and stuff I got uh, another call they need to talk to me again and stuff when I had to go back in and so I put the dogs back in the truck and stuff and it was nice and cool so I had to worry about that issue but had the fan on and stuff for him and that went back in there hanging and I guess he was freaking out and didn't want to go through the procedure and he was telling them that like that we were just going to drop him off and nobody's ever willing to help him and stuff and it was just that that I found that annoying but I was like, we're, we've offered to help him every, offered to buy him a duplex so he, we'd live next door to him. We offered to move, change our whole life, everything for this. So it was not really the best, I was not in the best of moods at the moment either. I'm back there and stuff, talk to him, trying to talk to me into doing the procedure. And I'm like, it might be months before we can get you back in again. So let's, we're here, let's just do this and stuff. And he was freaking out and just, his brain won't stop. It's just anxious and da da da, whatever. So we sitting there stuff and I was like, okay, whatever. So um, my wife texted me and said he was um, backing out of the procedure, didn't want to do it. So I was like, fuck, so I was like, what the hell? So I think he called her or whatever, and he called her or text her and stuff. So we basically talked to him a little bit. Um, he just said he couldn't do it, couldn't do it today, couldn't do it today. So went ahead, um, talked to the staff there, talked to him a little bit about, you know, getting him back in their appointment and stuff and whatnot. And we're just going to plan on whatever day it goes and let him know we're going to, either me or my um, bride will hang out with him, you know, for the rest of that day. You know, make sure it's good. So just give it a few hours. If he's, if he's still bleeding, you got to bring him back in, but otherwise he'll be fine. It's just a couple stitches, not a big deal. So 
uh, went ahead. Um, basically, he gave up. So I went and got the truck, pulled over there by the door, got him loaded back up, took him back home. And it was just that, like, like the kid faking a stomach ache, almost what it felt like, of not wanting to go to class. And then the moment he gets out and he realizes he's going home, he's like, let's stop get ice cream, which he didn't. It was just that whole, it kind of had that feeling of what was going on. So got him home, got him inside, got him all put away and stuff, and that got him all ready to go. So my day kind of been in that weird. And I even said, like, I'm willing to stick around for the next, you know, four hours and stuff. I have to I'll just, you know, hang out in the house. And luckily I brought an extra cigar. So basically just hang out there and just, you know, wait for him to get, you know, make sure the bleeding stops after a few hours and head home. And that wasn't the case. So he didn't have the surgery or nothing. So we took him home. I headed back. So my day was kind of that weird. Like, it was kind of thrown off. And it was that whole worrying about, we got to do this again. I got to take, you know, another day to go up there and get him and all that kind of stuff. And take him over and do the whole thing. So we got that old stuff figured out and got back to the house. Um, it was funny because it was starting to rain. Um, and I texted my wife. I said, hey, it's starting to rain here. She goes, that's storming here right now. It was funny because it's like just a couple miles up the road from me. And it's pouring down rain. And it's just barely starting there. But the rain came in pretty hard. We had a nice heavy rain, which was nice. I transplanted a bunch of plants that had kind of... Um, some bushes I'd planted a while back and it sprung off. I think I took like 12 new little starts off it and I basically dug them up and replanted them around the yard. The only place I actually wanted them, not my front yard. So I kind of moved them around and stuff and the nice rain will help soak them in and give them a good, you know, watering kind of thing. So that's always a good thing there too. So, but hung around, got a little bit of stuff, um, did a little bit of, you know, figuring out what I was taking with me um, for the camping trip this weekend and all the fun stuff that comes with it. And just, we haven't camped in so long. It's that I'm trying to remember what I need, what I don't need, and all the fun that comes with it, which is just amazing. So I was going to run up to Sam's Club and grab some muffins and some other stuff that just didn't do it. I said, ah, well, I'll get some stuff at Walmart on the way out of town. We'll grab some stuff, whatever. So kind of ran that plan instead. We could trade Eric Karen can pick out her actual um what she wants herself so as me have to try and guess what she wants kind of thing so um skipped the going to walmart park kind of thing and i thought well i need to go into home depot and get some more um the bug juice the tiki torch stuff or anti-bug stuff to, for the camping trip keep mosquitoes away and whatnot but um ended up not doing that I decided to hell that i'd do it in the morning i'll just get up early in the morning because i don't have the puppy so i don't have to worry about that at all so went ahead um hung around the backyard a little bit let the dog play it was funny because he must have picked up on my um frustration I guess the best word to put it for my father-in-law because um he everything was great he was like laying his head on my uh, father-in-law's arm and stuff in the truck and kind of getting like sympathy like laying there like you all right kind of thing checking on him and you know just that whole comforting type thing and it was good to see a little puppy picking up on that you know he was nervous and kind of scared and stuff and the pup picked up on it when we got back to the house the dog went in the backyard and went and found him. we got a rabbit like a stuffed rabbit that he plays with like a like a teddy bear but it's a rabbit shape and he went and found that thing and just started thrashing around and running out the yard and throwing it and just he was just like letting that anxiety out himself it was kind of funny so he must have picked up like i said he must have picked up on my little bit of frustration with the whole thing because he was very adamant about you know doing the whole you know just just letting that frustration out. it was like a little kid with a hammer just mashing stuff it was pretty funny so had a good laugh for that the owner came pick the dog up so i kind of told him about that and he was like it was kind of funny he was like yeah it's cool the dog's picking up on the emotions of other people and stuff and it was pretty good so we had a good little laugh a bit kind of thing um i did get a new toy for the puppy also i put his food like in a big cube and then as he rolls around the yard he gets his food out so he gets his meal he's eating like in two minutes a whole day's meal it takes him probably a good couple hours to roll the thing around and get pieces so it's good for his brain it helps you know work his mind a little bit helps wear him out which is always a good thing so we uh, i got the new one it's a smaller one a little bit easier for him to play with but i got it late so i didn't bother he already ate so i didn't bother putting anything in it yet so we'll try it out next week when he comes so we'll see how it works for that but yeah um karen got home from work um we talked a lot about how her dad thing went and that kind of deal and whatnot which was just it was amazing so Ended up making myself a nice little dinner. Uh, we chilled out, had ourselves a nice supper. Um, ended up watching a little bit of um, NCIS and stuff. Kind of hung out, talked and chatted, and just kind of de-stressed her day and talked about her day and stuff. And the just the concerns about her dad and if his um, if he needs more assistance than we're able to give him that far away. So we need to get him moved down here closer. Or get him into maybe I, I think even it's like a um, 55 and over community you know, type thing where there's more people hanging out, playing horseshoes or doing just whatever, you know. And I even told him, I said, what if you just got like a little record player and stuck it out in the driveway, you know, at one of these places and just said, hey, from like one, one o'clock every day, I'm going to, we're going to sit out here and play records and just bring the album of the first concert you were ever in, you, know, you ever attended kind of thing. And then put the record on light, quiet in the background, not full blast, blaring it real loud and stuff. You can actually talk to each other and tell stories of your first concert or your favorite concert or your, your crappiest concert or whatever you've been to. And just kind of talk about music because he loves music and golf it's the only two things he cares about in life so 
And he kind of liked that idea and stuff. And Karen thought that was a good idea. So we're going to look at maybe find a place we can just rent him a place for a month or two. But instead of buying him like a $60,000 or $100,000 house in one of these places and finds he hates that too. So don't want to keep buying and selling houses and kind of thing in the process. So we can rent him a place for a month or two maybe and go from there and see if that works. So who knows? We'll see what happens. But um, headed outside, um, watched a little bit of um, Prime out there and had myself another cigar for the evening. Wrapped it up, headed in, called it a night. So that's all I got for right now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe, wonderful day. Thanks for watching.